Hey, what's going on, YouTube fam? Hope you're doing great. Uh, sorry for that. I have my helper in here today, huh? Hey, you gotta be a helper. Yeah. Anyways, um, figured I'd share this with you just in case you ever get into doing um, some exotic type materials and or whatnot and filament drying and how it should be done so you don't mess stuff up. So... Um, on the screen right now, on my bamboo slicer, I've got some parts that are being made for some legs and braces and an exhaust fan for something. And kind of just drew that stuff up and um, modified it to the way that I needed it for what I got. And I'm printing these in PET CF. Um... I did some rough drafts and pet, well, it's probably terrible from a standpoint of light because my shades are closed, but um, I did a, dra a couple drafts in uh, pet G C F and uh, I kind of like it, um, so I'm going to make a couple sets in pet C F um, because of its better heat resistance and... Uh, um, ability to be kind of stronger, if you will, uh, than pet GCF. So that being said, um, pet CF needs to be printed at between 200 and well, two bamboos recommends 260 to 290. Um, I find that my best luck is with the build plate at 100 degrees with glue stick, not liquid glue, and the extruder at 275 degrees for all layers except the first layer. I print the first layer at 280 degrees. I set my ma max volumetric rate at 8 millimeters per second, and that seems to give me good results. However, on like a print that, like this that's going to run for probably eight to ten hours um the filament pet cf is highly uh uh oh man i lost the word absorbs a lot of water i lost the word but hydroscopic so what i do if you don't have one you should get one um poly dryers are absolutely superb for this um i've got a couple on order when they were they had like 30 percent off and i ordered a couple with the dryer but right now I'm using my um, uh, pie, uh, pie dryer and I've already had this drying for four hours at 70 C and now I've got my filament in the dryer box in here and I'm running it out. I've disconnected my AMS and I've got my filament running directly into the back of my P1S and by doing that that'll give me the best print results that I can accomplish um, having that dry filament with something like PET CF that's highly hydroscopic and, and wants to absorb that moisture. I also do want to point out, make sure you do have your chamber closed when you're doing this. Um, it, it does aid in keeping drafts out of this and keeping everything at a very even temperature. As you can see, the humidity in this room is sitting at about 48% which is good for humans and bad for filament. Um, so like when I store stuff like this TPU 95, I store it inside there if I'm not using my AMS for, I mean, I have bags for it, but I'm doing another project with this. So I store it in there temporarily where, where it's at 10% humidity to keep it stored. So yeah, that's, um, that's what I'm doing today. And uh, after this print gets done, Unfortunately, I'm doing this uh, quickly on my lunch break, so I'm not really filming this. I'm working my real job at the moment. But I did want to make a quick video on just how you can make your prints come out really good just by adapting. Drying needs to be done on filament, and if you're not drying it, you're, you're literally killing your print jobs, um, especially on your more high-end exotic-type filaments you'll drastically see big differences, but PETG and PLA and the carbon fiberglass fiber variants or whatever, 
um, you'll see noticeable difference in that as well. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So uh, just a quick little video and kind of how to. And if you have any questions, put them down below. Like, share, and subscribe to the video. I appreciate you, and we will see you on the next one. And I'm just going to add this to this video because I want to make this uh, as educational as possible, but also help you out with this expensive filament. So I just sliced my print job, and you can see um, at what I paid for this filament when I bought it. Um, this is going to be 345 grams of filament, and it's going to cost me $30 almost to make this and 14 and a half hours. So I don't want that to fail. Now, Bamboo does a great job at their, their lab and their slicer and, you know, setting things up. But I also do feel when you're doing certain items that they should be kind of slowed down. So, for example, over here on my initial layer, it's at 50, which is fine. Initial layer infill, I did 105, that's fine. The outer wall was set to 200, I dropped it to 150. Inner wall was set to 300, I dropped it to 200. And then sparse infill was 330, and I dropped it to 300. Uh, and it just really, in my top layer, top surface was 200, I did 175. The reason for that, it gives me a better quality print, and I don't, I run less of a chance of this messing up and costing me money, which I don't want it to do. I mean, you're going to waste money when you build things, but this is just a way to limit it. I'm in no rush for this. This isn't for a customer. This is just for something I'm doing for me. So I'm going to go ahead and print this out like that, and I figured I'd just share it with you. So again, just uh, if you have any questions, put them down below, and we'll see you in the next one.